Hi everyone, my name is George and in this video I want to unbox and set up fast photography a new telescope that I recently got. Let's meet this one. So this is SV Boni SV550 80mm f6 and uh, before I'm unboxing it I want to kind of briefly explain you how I got this one and uh, uh, basically what I'm planning to do with it. SV Boni sent it to me for a test review purposes and after I'm done with a review with some uh, imaging time I have to send the, the telescope to a next reviewer I don't know who it's gonna be yet in this video I'm glad to unbox the telescope set it up for photography so first of all when I received the package I was really surprised by the size of this telescope and it seems to me that this telescope was not tested by anybody else so I'm kind of getting a fresh copy of it okay so this is what you get in the packaging box, just the telescope itself. Yep, and there is nothing in there left, so we can get rid of the box. Man, how small it is. All right, so this is 80 millimeter APO from SV Boni. The model is called SV550. The dish shield is retractable, exactly the same as on uh, a 122 millimeter APO telescope. And uh, like, it's pretty solid and feels exactly the same as on my uh, bigger version of this telescope. And let's look at the lens. That's metallic aluminum cap. Mm, the smell of new telescope. And the glass on this telescope is FPL 51, not FPL 53. There is no built-in rotator installed, but you can purchase a rotator separately and install it right over here. In addition, when you want to do astrophotography with the APO telescope, you want to use flattener. So basically that's the corrector lens that makes your images looking much better. And in particular, uh, the shapes of the stars around the corners. So, I did not get a 1x flattener for this telescope yet. I know that I'm supposed to get one delivered together with the rotator a bit later. I don't know when, but at the moment I have 0.x fog reducer and flattener from a 122 millimeter telescope. So what I'm going to do is install Hello everybody, it's Future Me, and I tried this 0.x focal reducer and flattener from a 122mm APO telescope and I didn't get any good results. So basically I wasn't able to achieve a proper back focus with my APS-C sized ZWO 2600 MC Pro camera. So as you can see on the screen, on the test exposure, the stars in the corners, they have like a comet shape and the increment in distance between the reducer and the sensor of the camera wouldn't help at all because of the limitations of the focuser stroke that the telescope has. So what I did is ordered another 0.x focal reducer from SV Boni as well. And this reducer was designed specifically for SV503 duplet 80mm telescope. But some people on the internet, uh, they tried this reducer with SV550 triplet telescope and their images look good. So I also decided to give it a try. And with reduced focal length, the telescope itself will perform a bit faster. And the ratio, so right now it is f6. With the reducer, it will be f4.8, which is pretty good. I'm looking forward to get my test images. All right, guys, so in this part of the video, I'm going to set up this telescope for astrophotography. And actually, before recording uh, this clip, I've tried a couple of configurations how I can place all the accessories I need. I have this plate that I got in Laws for a couple of dollars. And then um, I'm going to place it on the top of the telescope. Then I have this 7 port USB hub that's going to go over there. And I also got Pegasus Astro Pocket Power Box to power everything, uh, camera mount, uh, the mini PC. This guy is going to go right over there. And uh, here is a mini PC. So usually the other two telescopes, they have a milli wider 3Q mini PC. This one I got, I think like last year just to try it like some couple of different configurations. So pretty much has the same specs as Mili PC, just different shape. It's much smaller, has only three USB ports. So anyway, 
uh, this PC is gonna go over there. So one of the things I like about this telescope is the same as for 122 millimeter is that on the top of the telescope rings here there are some uh, holes uh, with the threads so by the way Svibonia they use metric threads and those uh, thread size is M6 so the plan is to mount uh, this plate on top over there and uh, uh, using M6 screws uh, mount and secure the plate on the, t the top of the telescope rings I'm just gonna put it like on a time-lapse mode so that you'll see what I'm talking about All right, now since the plate is secured, let's install all the accessories. So first, as I showed earlier, I'm going to install this USB hub right on top of the plate. And I'm going to do this using these uh, hanging strips. Basically, those are like Velcro-style Velcro strips. Yep, you can see it's pretty much secured and looks good. Now let's install the guide scope and this guy gonna go right over here and uh, now I need to install all the cables All right, also while I was working on cable management, I decided to switch from uh, 120 mm mini to ZWO, my old 224MC camera. Uh, yep, it is a color camera and uh, for guiding it's better, a little better to use a monochrome camera, but this one has a different body shape, so it's just a bit better for cable management. And uh, in terms of guiding performance uh, for this focal length, this guiding system will handle all the guiding tasks easily. And uh, yep, it just looks a bit nicer. So um, this is how everything looks like all together. And let's install it on the HEQ5 Pro mount. And now I'm just gonna work on the cable management for the mount. Where's the cable? All right, so there are two cords. The power cord goes right there and the cord for the mount over there. The thing is with the cable is the USB cable for the mount is way too long. I don't know yet what I need to do but I'll definitely gonna do something about it. Um, first of all I'm gonna slide it in here. And if I keep it this way Yep, it all looks good in all directions. So yeah, I need to install cable clip over here and I mean, I don't know if you can see it, yeah. I'll install cable clip over here 
and we'll secure the cord this way. And now I need to figure out what I'm going to do with this part of spaghetti. So the only thing I need to finish with the telescope is to get a better cable for my guide camera, uh, install the imaging camera of course, and I think we're good to go. Okay, what I didn't think about is these cables they are on the way of a guide scope. Alright, so I had to replace the position of cables from this side to the other side of the telescope. Alright guys, so guess what? I decided to balance the telescope and I couldn't do it because the back part of the telescope is much heavier than the front part. I have a pretty big 2600 MC Pro camera with a filter wheel and the original dovetail that came with the telescope was short so I had to install a longer dovetail that used to be with a 122 millimeter SV550 telescope and right now I have enough uh, lengths to uh, balance the telescope properly. Right now this length is on the way of the stopping screw for the focuser of the telescope so I had to flip it upside down and uh, this is how it looks at the moment. All right and in this part of the video I'm going to install this ZWO electronic focuser uh, right on top of this uh, focuser of SV550. Alright, so I'm going to pause here for a second and uh, uh, pretty much this focuser is exactly the same one as on 122mm uh, APO telescope. So once you take the first screw out, uh, this screw, once you take it out, out of this thread, uh, there is another screw. You just got to basically uh, rotate the focuser until uh, you see when there is another screw that uh, basically holds uh, this focuser knob. and then you undo it as well all right and it goes all the way up once you unscrew the first one you need to rotate this focuser knob until you find another screw right there And you undo it as well. Okay, and once the second screw is done, you just take it off. Yep, and as you can see, yep, that's the first one and the second one. So these small two screws, they hold this focuser knob right over there. So the focuser looks secured. What I want to do now is to switch the position of the guide scope from this side on the other side. All 
already the telescope is mounted and I just have to finish cable management there. So, yep, I need just to connect everything back and we're good to go for the first imaging glide. Alright, so this is how full equipped telescope looks like. Uh, I got everything that I need to run my imaging sessions installed. A mini PC, a power box, USB hub to get more devices connected. Uh, there is a guide scope, autofocuser and of course the camera. And as I said earlier, I removed a 0.x focal reducer from a 120mm telescope and installed 0.x focal reducer from 80mm doublet telescope from SV503. I think that's the how the model called. Anyway, this is reducer for F7 telescope. This telescope is F6. But before I did some like couple of test exposures with this reducer in the camera, test exposures look good. But now it's actually time to test out this telescope and get like at least an hour, maybe two hours worth of exposure time and uh, get some like first final images. So as a summary I got new telescope. This is 80mm triplet from SV Boigny. Native focal length here is 480 millimeters, and an f-ratio is f6. I did not receive a field flattener and a rotator yet but at the moment I'm using 0.x focal reducer from SV Boigny as well. Um, basically yep this is how the process of setting up this telescope plus photography looked like. Let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions. If you already have this telescope, let me know user experience, what you like, what you don't like about the telescope. Just basically let me know your thoughts about this um, telescope from SV Boigny. Hello again, I'm recording this part of the video a few days after the setting up process. Lately we've had uh, so many cloudy nights, but one of the nights was clear and I got two and a half hours of exposure time on a deep sky target using a new telescope. In particular I pointed the telescope towards the North American Nebula, also known as NGC 7000. Uh, this time I was shooting under a slightly more light polluted sky, Bortle 6, instead of my Bortle 4 slash 5 sky. But it was like a test night and I was kind of pleasantly surprised by the amount of details and the quality of the image I got just during these two and a half hours worth of exposure time. So at the end of this video you will see the first light image captured with 80mm APO telescope from SV Boigny. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I really hope to see you in the future videos and until next time, clear skies.